You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Welcome to the Catholic Mama, where you'll learn how to deepen and defend your faith, find comfort as we share the vocation of parenthood, and learn how to raise your children confidently Catholic. I'm your host, Christine Mooney Flynn. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to the Catholic Mama podcast. I'm your host, Christine Mooney Flynn, and thanks for joining me in this episode where I'm excited we get to talk uh, with a- another Catholic wife and mother. I know we have lots of Catholic wives and mothers on this show, but each one I think has such a unique perspective on the faith that I love talking to so many women who are in the same kind of vocation that I am in, and I'm sure many of the listeners are in, but we all get to kind of see how we're coming from different uh, perspectives. And today I have Jenny Shaw on, who is the blogger behind barefootabbey.com, and also a woman with a very beautiful voice that I know my children and I tried horribly to sing along with, but at least enjoyed her voice. <laughs> The, the St. Lucy uh, song a couple months ago at Christmas time, or I should say Advent in the Advent season. So anyway, Jenny, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So <laughs> Jenny, uh, I know we were just talking about that. It's spelled like Jeannie, but it's Jenny. Correct. correct. Um, your mother's name. It's your mother's name? My grandmother. My mm-hmm. grandmother. And she spelled the same way? Yes. Just confusing people for a couple generations. In East Texas, we do not follow the uh, phonetic rules of the rest of the world. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's right. There's pockets in the South where it's just like that and people just have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, how, how long have you had Barefoot Abbey? Hmm. I'm thinking, well, that it actually goes back to the name itself goes back to that's kind of uh, our name for our house. So it's it's more after the monastic tradition. So, um, cause people have asked me, Oh, you don't have, your name's not Abby, all that, you know, things like <laughs> that. that confusing for, for some. Um, so we, that's just what we've called our home, um, from the beginning. And, uh, some friends were asking me, you know, why don't you share about, you know, the liturgical living with music and things like that. And, you know, put it where, people can share about it and just um, where it can, you know, make more of an impact um, instead of like us trying to regurgitate what you mentioned in a conversation, you know, two weeks ago type of thing. Um, (laughs) It's a little tricky. (laughs) You know, so um, it kind of grew out of that. And, um, and they're just like, I was like, well, I have no idea what to call it, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, a friend just suggested, well, just call it (laughs) what you call your home, you know, Barefoot Abbey, which is you know, it's basically just an extension, um, of our home, you know, in the form of a ministry. So, so I've always been intrigued by people who have named their homes. You don't, you don't live like in a regular neighborhood, I'm guessing. Oh no, not anymore. We used to live right outside of Dallas. Um, like, did you call your home that back then? Yes. Just out of, uh, necessity and needing to kind of mentally, uh, make a break. (laughs) I like that. I, I've, I've always liked the idea of doing it, but I never thought I could just living in, you know, a suburban neighborhood. Can I do that? Is that weird? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, go after it. Make it more popular. That's my my thought on it. You know, bring it back. <laughs> I like that idea. It sounds very quaint and, and, and you make something very special out of the home, which has been trivialized, you know, for a number of decades now. Oh, yes. <laughs> so now you have this special home. So you are not in the, you're, you're out in the boonies now, right? Uh, yes. Yes, my closest target is uh, about an hour away. <laughs> so so yeah. it's a hike. Yeah, lots of planned trips, lots of audiobooks in the car to get us uh, from point A to point B. <laughs> my aunt, uh, half the year they live in right in the heart of Los Angeles, and then the other half of the year they live in a cabin in the woods in the Adirondacks in New York. And oh. so it is one, one, like the six months of the year that they're in LA is for her, and the six months that they're in New York is for my uncle basically, you know, just to keep them both happy. But yeah, I remember, she, I mean, to her, for her to go grocery shopping, it's, uh, you know, a two and a half, three hour round trip. Right. And not exactly. including, and that's just the driving. <laughs> not including yeah, yeah, you're not even like saying her and around the aisles. You're just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What you say, what you pay in gas, you're saving and probably the cost of living out there. Yes, that's what we tell ourselves. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, so you've had Barefoot Abbey for quite a while. What kind of things, you now you, you have, how many, how many children do you have? 
I have seven living children. Uh, my oldest son is 10. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So you've been busy. Yes. Are you yes. homeschooling as well? Um, we do homeschool, uh, but only four of them. I mean, my, my uh, fourth son is only in kindergarten. So, you know, okay. definitely much. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so um, how when you're saying like you, you had all these things that your friends were telling you, oh, you need to uh, put on a blog so other people can, can share. Can you just give us kind of an overview of what you've been sharing on, on Barefoot Abbey over the past uh, several years? Yes. Yes. Um, I've done different things. Like I do singing with the saints and that's a, like a monthly hymn um, that either corresponds to like a feast day during that month or the monthly devotion. Um which, you know, this month is uh, St. Joseph uh, for March. But, um, you know, things like that. And then because my uh, background is more classical training um, in music, dragging uh, different pieces together to make playlists uh, for like feast days themselves and things like that, or seasons um, like the Lenten calendar and uh, just things like that. Um, and in addition to, I mean, we do the food as well and activities for liturgical living, but um, they were really interested in, uh, in the, you know, bringing in the music because that, that really is a historical tradition in the church uh, going back. I mean, you, we were talking like the 300s. Um, and and it, 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 singing is like praying twice or is that the yeah that's the, <laughs> I the, can't think of it. the saint augustine quote i believe okay i'm not sure if it's it's actually him that said it but uh but yeah i think it's attributed to him so it's been a, a part of the the church for a very long time yeah mm-hmm. yeah well, I, the uh since the arian uh, heresy yes <laughs> oh is that really when yes yes it was uh it was to combat that actually uh, because the uh, Arius would go around and he would take the popular songs of the time and he would rewrite them and, and put uh, Arian words <laughs> to them, which I mean, I keep saying Arian, but uh, for people who don't know what that is, it's saying that Christ was a creature. Right. Uh, and, you know, think you could like kind of equate it to like Hercules. He had some, he later on had some divinity, but he was created at one point and uh, which we do not believe as Catholics. Uh, so so yeah <laughs> that's interesting what a way of uh marketing your heresies <laughs> well exactly you know like all the bar songs and and uh right, it gets popular sinks in so this is why it matters what you listen to <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <sighs> so um yeah, yeah i know you you love music so much and it's been part of your life for pretty much ever right yeah, my um, my mother was in the marching band. That was kind of where she got her musical training. But she took that and learned how to pick out hymns. Um, and they're actually, my, my dad uh, is an ordained Baptist minister. Um, he's retired from that now. Uh, but uh, But my mother would, you know, after lunch, just pick out hymns uh, for us. And, you know, she would sing along and we'd try to sing along. And so that's kind of where all that uh, sacred music, I would say. Okay. You were steeped in it from a young age. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and she just taught her, kind of taught herself. So we're not talking Mozart here, but. Um, right. But yeah. enough. And that's really all you need. You know, you don't have to have a expansive knowledge of it. You just have to provide the exposure of it. That's, that's a really good point. I am not musically inclined. My, I, you know, would pick up an instrument every so often and I would make progress, you know, those that beginner progress for a week or two mm-hmm. and then things would get a little hard and I would quit. <laughs> and, um, and, but my husband on the other hand has, um, I remember once he told me he played guitar. It was like when we first met and I was envisioning just, you know, just strumming around on an acoustic guitar as a, you know, like mm-hmm, a college mm-hmm. quad. It turns out he's actually a phenomenal electric guitarist. <laughs> and I had no idea. He, like music, like, he is very, very serious. He's been taking lessons um, he started when he was like, I don't know, five years old or something like that. Wow. So he's, he's a very, very good musician. Um, so he has all this knowledge and I have pretty much none. And so, but I'm in, I'm the one that's, you know, mostly in charge of the kids education. So I, I do get a little overwhelmed because I don't know where or how to include the music. And oftentimes I just put it on in the background. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to be doing? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we call that free listening. And it's just kind of, um, you know, for enjoyment for 
exposure just to make it more familiar, you know, to where they're not, we've never heard this type of music before, mm. and, you know, because that's half the battle is, is having it be um, something that's not new and scary or daunting or, you know, overwhelming to them. Um, yeah. Okay. That's interesting. He's, I mean, I'm, I homeschool my kids and music appreciation always shows up and I have no idea how to go about doing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just put it on. <laughs> so yeah, that's as far that's as I've a great gone. start. I mean, it is. And okay. my my oldest son. I mean, he's only six. He's been taking piano lessons for a year, uh, once a week, and he practices every day. And so, and then my husband plays and and writes his own songs, so the kids hear him recording. Uh, so they they do have you know exposure. I I just make up songs. I like to sing a lot, even though I'm not great at it. But I I, I think it's fun just to make up silly songs throughout the day. So I'm constantly making mm-hmm. sound effects and songs <laughs> hey, that's great. somewhere. But yeah, so if you are a parent who wants to do music appreciation or, um, or, you know, just want to expose your kids to it, is that, is there anything beyond at, at the beginning, I guess, than just exposure? Um, yeah, uh, you can just really give them a foundation, um, by broadening, you know, what you do play. I know, I mean, we, we have a default, you know, we usually go to our favorites and things like that, you know, as people. Um, but, you know, trying to expand that uh, is, is great. And using different um, like free resources, like even like Spotify and, and things like that. Um, YouTube is more, you know, hit or miss, um, but, you know, Amazon music, even you can type in a time period like 1800s and it'll pull up stuff. Oh, um, interesting. A good way to, you know, a good way to get a little bit more exposure is to match it with whatever history you're doing. So if you're, I mean, ancient history, you're not going to have a lot just because we don't have a lot um, that has been saved from that period. But once you get into like the medieval period and onward, there's a lot, I mean, and thanks to the church really, because they saved uh, the music of the medieval times through their, you know, different uh, mass settings and things like that. So we owe them a a great debt for that, but um, you know, things like that that. idea about the, the pairing it up with history. That's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that. And, and, and you can do, of course, if you, if you are familiar with a composer, um, you know, Mozart, Beethoven, those classical composers um you can always just like listen to all their their works or get on their channel um on spotify or so you don't necessarily have to be able to like point out certain musical features (laughs) as you're listening we're just it's just uh, yeah you can do so like what do you say you call it free listening yeah that's just what our family calls it just because you're not i mean you're not critically structured yeah yeah yeah, you know, you're you're not looking, oh, whoa, well, now he's playing a violin, or now he's doing this, or now he's in this key signature. You know, you're not, you're not doing that. You're just enjoying it, you know? Yeah. It's to be a part of your, your, your family's culture and, and what, you know, what y'all do, so. Yeah, which is not daunting at all. Thank you. No, for doing that. You just turn it on, you just turn it on, you know? Yeah. And then, um, you know, as you, um, do you vary your music throughout the year like through for each of the seasons or is this just you know how, how do you structure the the music listening in your, in your own home being um, so musically inclined just like trained the, as you are? the listening what we listen to yeah um well so like the penitential seasons which are uh you know advent and and lent uh for the universal church um for that, we just do sacred music. And that's just more of a, of our thing for, you know, I'm trying to, to create an atmosphere, um, which I mean, of course I slip up, like the radio is still tuned to, to whatever my husband has it on. So of course it might come on and I'll forget for, you know, a couple miles. I'll be like, Oh wait, aren't we supposed to be (laughs) (laughs) listening to something else? right (laughs) But, um, but I mean, that's what we try to do just so it's a, another reminder because it's hard. I mean, you wake up and you're in your patterns and your habits and, you know, or some, or a kid's been up all night and you forget what day it is. And, um, <laughs> you know, so you, you need those reminders, or at least I do. Uh, but I, I could probably be more organized, but, <laughs> but it's good to have that uh, reminder. <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah. But, so, I mean, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'm, I don't know. (laughs) 
Um, yeah, so I wind up, we have serious XM on, on, um, uh, in, in the minivan and I wind up, the only reason I have kept that subscription is because they have very gentle music and I want my kids, some, a lot of times my husband and I, the only way that we can talk and have a quiet time and have a, a quick night where everybody's in bed is we just go out for a little nighttime drive. Mm. <laughs> like I put on the soothing music on there. That's like the only reason why I have this. <laughs> That's an awesome idea though. I, I, I know it's like, I don't even know how much it is for serious, but now I listen, I like listening to um, the old radio classic, um, um, like the, the old radio shows where they mm-hmm. had to make, you know, make the sound effects in the studio and all that. So yeah, that's the on there. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't know, of shaking a metal sheet for for light or thunder, <laughs> um, and I've tried to expand a little bit because they, I mean, they have a they have the Symphony Channel and classics and all that, and they do have the the couple of Catholic stations as well, so it does work out. I just I tend to, like you said, stick with what I'm comfortable with, and mostly it's either I don't play a lot of music in the car. I I try to keep it so that you know we can have conversations or. Um, I guess what I'm, I'm trying to say is as I'm talking, I'm realizing I could um, include music a little bit more, which is interesting because I might do it, but I, I guess, and I love music and especially sacred music. I just don't mm-hmm. I'm realizing I don't add it as much as I could. Yeah. We try to, um, and what I tell people is try to pin it to something that happens every day. I mean, this is with mm. prayer. This is with music. This is with whatever you want to make happen really. But um, you know, like I'm going to play classical music during dinner or I'm going to play, play it during like bath time. They're a captive audience. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, like they're like, just pick a time and it doesn't have to be all those different times. I mean, just pick one, but you know, that's going to happen every day. So it, it can kind of trigger your, your memory if it's something that's reoccurring like that. Yeah. Uh, now, um, have you, uh, as far as the liturgical living goes and, and using you know, the seasons of the year to, to like to pin, pin your music to, mm-hmm. how did you get interested in liturgical living in the first place? Was this, I know that you're, you said you were a convert mm-hmm. before we hit record. Right. Was this, did you like <laughs> hop on liturgical living right away or is this something you grew into? Oh, girl, girl. Mm. <laughs> this, uh, th- it was really an escape for me, actually. Uh, so during college, there was just a lot going on. There was a lot of stress. My dad got sick and I was working multiple jobs to get through school. And um, I was courting my husband and there was just so much going on. And I got to my senior year and I was basically just overwhelmed. Um, You know, I'm I'm trying to graduate. We had just gotten married. Um, You know, I was expecting our first baby. You know, it was just a lot going on. So there was a little Catholic bookstore right near campus, like in walking distance. Um, I went to TCU and it's, it's a small campus anyway, but there's, you know, some surrounding things um, nearby that you can get to even when you don't have a vehicle. Um, I was taking the train at the time from, from Dallas side to Fort Worth side. And it was, you know, basically stranded there. <laughs> for, so that's for, also not stressful, is it? Yeah. You know, you know, one, one extra thing. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, it was a lot, but, um, you know, and I just picked up this little book, uh, just little booklet and it was about liturgical living and it was like on sale. Like it was like three bucks or I wouldn't have bought it cause I didn't have any money. Um, but, and I, and I started reading it on the train and it went by, uh, geographical location and it just said different little traditions that they had in that area that celebrated different you know, saints, like St. Barbara's branch in, in uh, December and, you know, just different things like that, St. Lucie and um, things like, things like that. Like, it didn't even, like, go into a lot of depth on, on very many, but, um, but it was just kind of a, a little spark there, and I, I just started, you know, looking those things up and trying to make connections with those things uh, as kind of an outlet, a creative outlet that I didn't have to get a grade for, um, or that I didn't have to have be a lesson plan for my students um, after school and things like that. So, so yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's funny. I yeah, I just did a a podcast um, episode maybe a week or two ago about how to get started with liturgical living, and 
I had said, you know, if, if anybody is stressed out by the idea of starting, and I had a number of people say, oh, I'm so glad to hear I wasn't the only one that got stressed by the whole idea of liturgical living. And then this was, a, for you, this was the opposite, that had the opposite effect. That's really interesting. Well, I mean, and, it, and looking back, I'm like, well, why didn't I just pare down if I was so stressed out and, you know, things like that. <laughs> but I, at the time, I didn't feel like that. I felt like I need to throw myself into something else so that I'm feeling productive. I'm tricking myself into feeling like I'm still being productive. Um, you know, <laughs> even though I've got this homework. You do this- something, but it's not the thing you have to do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. More pr- procrastination, I guess. But um, hopefully it's had a positive effect on my family. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I've, um, it, it's interesting because I, I'm a convert, uh, relatively recently and, um, you know, I'm, I'm learning along with my kids a, a lot of this stuff since, mm-hmm. you know, we just, we just converted a couple of years ago, but it's a lot of fun because it makes everybody, I, you know, I, it's difficult for kids to understand how beautiful and meaningful the mass is and the Eucharist is and that that'll take time to have that really sink in but they can get excited over a party that we're throwing for a saint you know or right. you know, the fact that they get cookies for what this saint or, or whatever we do um it's it's been a real it's brought real joy to the family from living living according to this broader calendar besides just the January to December thing mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah, my boys will not uh, let a solemnity go by now without dessert. Like I've started that, and, and now it's like coming back to bite me. I'm like, you yeah, know? I was talking to somebody. You, if you follow the liturgical calendar with desserts, you are on. That's a fast road to type two diabetes. Yeah, exactly. I'm like solemnities only, guys. Solemnities only, and they're like. So I'm like very careful when I like say the name of a of a, Not day. a solemnity. I'm like, Yo. don't tell me. No- there's two this month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're already like looking forward to St. Joseph. They're like, what are we going to have? I'm like, oh no. Oh, don't make me think that far ahead. <laughs> and, uh, I, I love St. Patrick's Day. And, uh, yeah, just the, mm-hmm. So that is that is the one that um, I'm going to put a lot of a lot of effort and sugar into. <laughs> and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see because then uh, St. Joseph's Solemnity is only two days later. So Right, exactly. <laughs> They're all almost back to back. And then my daughter wants to throw a big party because the first day of spring, which we we live in Wisconsin now, so I, I totally get. I would love to have a party on the first day of spring, <laughs> but that would be three in a week. So oh, we're man. during Lent. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but it's it's a nice idea. But yeah, my goodness, if you if you celebrate each of these feast days, you uh, you're gonna have to start checking your blood sugar levels. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, and we had to, I mean, we weren't doing a lot other than the solemnities, but um, dessert wise, but my husband does have uh, prediabetes. So I'm like, we cannot, we cannot be like putting extra and, you know, so (laughs) we'll keep it to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, let's not add that um, suffering to (laughs) <laughs> life yeah not another layer of suffering that takes yeah yeah bad. he doesn't need that he works too hard for that yeah <laughs> so okay so we have some tips for um you know families who want to start adding music i i love that you talk about your home as like this domestic monastery how do you have any i, I can you give any ideas of what that means and, and what people could do to develop that in their own homes besides naming their house which i'm going to start talking to my husband about tonight <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i mean for us um i haven't seen this in in any church documents but i mean if you have a saint quote y'all pass it on because i'd love to see it that'd be great um but for us, that is just, you know, modeling our home after a monastery in the sense of, you know, we have a liturgy of life. We have, you know, we try to have a routine, not a schedule, because I can't stick to that with this many kids and newborns and and that. But we have a routine of, you know, kind of what happens throughout the day, what happens next. And, you know, basically making a list or making a, a purposeful choice to have certain things as part of our day and there I mean you might hear from other people about how it's about isolating yourself or things like that for us it's not really about that for us it's more we are trying to guard time to where we can do more beneficial things for the world you know 
because I mean, it's pointless if you're just like hiding away. Um, the whole point is that you're making time to offer sacrifices, you know, for the poor sinners, for the souls in purgatory, all these things, but you can't do that with constant distractions. Um, and I'm not talking about children. I'm talking about, you know, like I have to go here, I have to go there and, you know, and for us like two hours, you know, to get groceries and, you know, you've got to kind of safeguard for us anyway. Cause I, I just couldn't handle it. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't, um, keep, keep making everybody happy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, yeah, with that makes sense. Patients. You know, I just, I couldn't do it. I'm, I'm sure maybe some more organized people could and are succeeding at that. But for me, it was just a, a constant disappointment and I had to do something different because, you know, it wasn't making a good atmosphere for, the, for our home and it just, you know, so yeah, that was my, I like that. I mean, you're creating space <laughs> to have that. I mean, there, yesterday we wound up running around to a lot of different things, a pediatrician appointment and a co-op and uh, Taekwondo and like it was just a lot in in one day mm -hmm. and um and we were supposed to go to another co-op today and I brought my two two of my kids and I was like do you guys want to stay home and do school or do you want to go to the co-op and they're like oh my gosh we just want to stay home right <laughs> we, had a, we had a quiet we went to adoration my son and my husband wow. um, that was yesterday they went to mass too oh yeah that was a big big day for my my son um but we we went to adoration and we we've already gotten prayer time and quiet time in and just kind of stretched that stretch that out so that we could you know make better use it felt, it felt like we were making better use of our our time even if we were mm -hmm. restricting what we were doing mm -hmm. well and that's the thing like there there are so many wonderful things that we can be doing you know with our time and and but we do have to make choices because we can't say no to every or say yes to everything we have to say no to some things to, to protect that yes for those other things and that, I mean, it's hard because just outside pressure and, yeah, you know, our guilt, you know, mom guilt about, oh, well, we're not doing this or we're not in this activity or, we're, you know. Are we stunting our children's growth by not yeah, doing all just, the things? Yeah. Yeah. But we, I mean, we have to have peace. That, That's a really good that reminder. You know, we're making choices with the information we have and yeah. we can go off of that. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. That That is actually, <laughs> that's a good reminder for me. <laughs> for me too. <laughs> I, I felt it yesterday. It was just, it was too many. I said yes to too many things. Um, and then just piled things on and, and suddenly the day had gone by and, and I was like, man, if you, if I did this, you know, strung this several days in a row or kept doing this, I mean, years would go by and I wouldn't even know what had happened. Mm. And that was just one day. And I was just very acutely aware that that was, you know, that happens every once in a while, but I'm, um, pretty adamant of not making that uh, a regular thing. Yeah, that sounds like our Fridays. They're just packed with with everything because we're in town, you know. So we're like, we got to get everything done because because we're here and we got to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, which is fine one day a week, but it's. Can you it's imagine if you like did that all the time? And, and yeah, like, exactly. I would just be like, I don't even know what day it is. Like, yeah, I mean, how many families you know are like, oh, we don't even see our kids, or you know, and they have this, <laughs> you know a litany of all the activities and the driving, and I just, I'm, I'm, I guess I just, I just don't want. I'd rather have that that domestic monastery. I like that concept. Um, okay. And also I would say thank you because you put up the reminders about the Ember days. So thank oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> you're the, you're yeah. the only reason. Bring them back. Times Bring them year. back. Everybody get on board. Let's do this. Like <laughs> I keep sharing it. it. I've been sharing what you're sharing. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, just I'm, that's the whole thing. Like I'm like, just offer it for the church, please. Just, you know, what anything you can just <laughs> yeah yeah that stuff matters um okay so if people want to get reminders of ember days <laughs> from, from on instagram <laughs> no, wait, can you tell the listeners where where they can find find you jenny oh okay so um my instagram which is basically where i'm able to put the most things just because i don't have to format a post uh really and that's just at Barefoot Abbey is my handle on that. And then the the blog with like longer, more um, novel type, <laughs> novel length <laughs> meanderings <laughs> um, is barefootabbey.com. Uh, so those are the, the two main things. I mean, and I'm, I've got the same stuff on Facebook. Usually I try to put the same thing just for the different 
groups, but uh, Instagram, I think, is the easiest because you don't have all that other uh, distraction from here's ads, here's some more links, here's some. Yeah. Just yeah, that, that's <laughs> my husband. When I first started thinking about um, doing anything, he's like, you should just do Instagram. I was like, I don't need a website. He's like, you, you can have a website, but I think you should focus on Instagram. I'm so glad he gave me that advice because he's more in mm-hmm. the online marketing world and uh, that kind of content creation. And it's such a nice place to be. I think I've mentioned Catholic Instagram, the Catholic corner of Instagram in like the last four podcasts I've done. I just really <laughs> like being there. I've met so many wonderful people and connected with them and just, it's, it's such a nice place to be in it and the format's so easy. Mm-hmm. more peaceful. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. You're right. Less distraction. Um, so if you, if a person wanted to pair back on social media for Lent, it won't feel as distracting to be on Instagram, maybe. I right. Don't know. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will put for anyone listening, I will put the links as well in the show notes um, of where you can find Jenny, everything that she just said. And I gotta say, you're, you've got a beautiful voice. Is, is this, <laughs> do you, like, wind up with this? Is this something that you had to train yourself into? Or, or are you just, I mean, your, your singing voice is just <laughs> wonderful. Um, thank you. Um, is there thought, hope for a person like me? Is what oh, <laughs> well, I mean, here's the deal. Your, your vocal cords, um, you know, they run on air. That's the gas. So you've got to have your diaphragm working. Um, and, and that's a muscle. So mm-hmm. the more you use that muscle, the more you can expel air and therefore, you know, get more air in, you're going to make a better sound, a more, uh, a stronger sound. Um, and I mean, that's like any other muscle, you, the more you use it, the more, um, it's going to do what you want it to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but even sometimes it, it surprises you when you don't, uh, uh, give it the uh, attention you should have probably. <laughs> but somatic <laughs> breathing is a, a hard thing for people to re- relearn. A lot of a lot of people to relearn. So yes, yes, you can't but have any vanity because it's gonna. I mean, your stomach is gonna expand. You're going to have to <laughs> make room for that air. Uh, so yes, <laughs> you're not gonna look but, slender as this is happening. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, 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 you will not. Um, there'll be a lot of movement there. Um, but uh. But yeah, uh, I mean, I just kind of sang hymns and things growing up. And then uh, in, I mean, I did, you know, high school, college, uh, high school choir, sorry. Um, and then I started in, in college in a choir, which was just, a, you know, anybody sign up, blah, 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 um, deal, like as an elective during lunchtime. Um, and then that's basically where they pulled their, their music students from. Um, and you, you could go and, and audition for the, the degree program, uh, there. So that's what I did. And so surprisingly, I went in as, as pre-med and was taking all these, uh, science classes. <laughs> so I was, you know, I was, you know, like I was doing biology and biology lab and, you know, chemistry 101 and just, which was, you know, so interesting to me, but but uh, I actually, what, what really turned me on to uh, the singing of classical music, I mean, my mom would play the local radio station in the car and things like that, but the actual, like, singing it was Dvorak Stabat Mater. Huh. Um, and he, it, I mean, it's gorgeous. Uh, it's a romantic era setting of that. He wrote it because he had uh, just lost several of his children by different means like it's like one after the other I mean he couldn't catch a break um and he really identified with our lady's you know sorrow at the foot of the cross and um so that's why he wrote it and you and you can just really feel it um in the way he wrote that music uh but um would you send me a link of a good you know to so that we can share that as well Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be a good one to include. It's, I'd like to. It's ten movements. Um, so if you only want to listen to one movement, listen to the last one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just include that even. But um, it's uh, why my while it's in Latin, but uh, it's while my body here de- decays, um, let me be with you in paradise. You know mm-hmm. that that's the whole like last uh, part of that. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. 
Um, but, but anyway, yeah. So he, he played that during our first, that's what we sung that first semester. And, but the first class, all he did was just play it. And I was blown away. So I was like, I and there you were. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I think I need to be a part of this. That's amazing. Uh, that's awesome. And help bring, you know, help bring this to other people. Yes, uh, but you certainly do. But, you know, that I love, <laughs> I could not, um, uh, I love that the St. Lucie song, um, oh. <laughs> Lucia song, and I can only find like I can only find the like Napoli version of it. I was like, that's not the oh, one I yeah. want to listen to. Like, this doesn't have anything to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not Saint Lucia. Yeah, and, and that's um, yeah. My friend actually asked me to do that, so that's what kind of started all that. Was she said, "Can anybody find this or know of the English?" I said, "Okay, I'll record you one." <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is when I was like, I'm gonna keep this on the DL. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. And well, I'm she, glad you you've done it. It's it really so so nice. We listened to that quite a few times around like uh, years ago too. For feast day. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Jenny, thank you so much for joining me, and I um I'm excited that I get to share uh, your resources with my listeners. And oh, yeah, again, yeah. everybody listening, I will put the show the links in the show notes so you can connect with jenny um and in the meantime everyone just uh put on some nice music and have it in the background if you're like me and a little nervous about music appreciation but <laughs> thank you these mm-hmm. tips were great mm-hmm. all right um and then i guess everyone until next time don't forget to subscribe i'm going to do a, a quick plug there subscribe and leave a, a nice review please that would be great <laughs> all right everyone <laughs> the next time Don't forget to head over to thecatholicmama.com to get your free copy of How to Talk to Your Kids About God. This handy little ebook will teach you how to broach the topic of God with your children or how to respond to your kids when they want to talk about God, as well as give you answers to seven of the trickiest questions about the faith that Christian parents face. You'll love the easy to understand grown up answers, the pared down but not talked down answers you can share with your kids plus recommended resources if you'd like to deepen your understanding of the topic. Get yours free at thecatholicmama.com. WCATradio.com has a show for every interest. Apologetics, theology, moral living, and more. Know Your Faith. Please look up my show, Know Your Faith, by logging into WCATradio.com. Then click on Fridays, and that's where you'll find me. Know Your Faith, a show hosted by me, Robert Madrigal, and we'll see you at the show. For listening to a production of WCAT Radio, please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.